we'll see, man. I'll be really curious to see how Oklahoma's run game attacks Tulane's defense, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, we're going to face a really tough Tulane Green Wave team coming up this Saturday. What do we expect from them? Before we get to our keys to the game and breaking it all down on our Friday show, we're going to give you a little bit of a primer for Tulane coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As you think about the Tulane Green Wave, Jay, what's the first thing that really jumps out to you? That Summerall's walk into a really good situation that Willie Fritz left him, right? He's not walking. He didn't walk in with minimal talent. They still retain some good ones, and they got some really good transfers. I think the, the big thing that a lot of people have slept on is how many transfers that they actually brought in and how productive they could potentially be. That Darian Mensa kid, I was really shocked that he won the offensive job. I went and looked at his numbers. He's completing 70% of his passes right now. Six touchdowns, yeah. one pick. He's playing really good football, John. Uh, but he doesn't run a lot. He scrambles, but he doesn't run a lot. So he's one of those elusive dudes that goes out there and makes something happen. He's he's a quote-unquote gamer. We're going to have our hands full in making him and keeping him in pressure. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a quarterback that, you know, he does things – he does a lot of things well. You know, he he runs well, he throws well. Uh, you know, they're they're getting him into opportunities that to allow him to be successful too. You know, he they're not throwing the ball downfield. They do. They're being successful because they're wide open down the field. Uh, this is a, a two lane green wave uh, offense that I think has has schemed some things really well, and they looked really good against Kansas State. And so if they can continue to do that and they're able to find ways to get their receivers open against Oklahoma, it, it could be for a difficult challenge for the Sooners. You know, you look at his passing, you know, he's only completed or he's only attempted nine passes, 20 or more yards down the field, and he's completed five of them. But he's living right now in the short to intermediate game where he has just five incompletions from zero to 20 yards. So he's doing a really, really good job at, you know, placing the ball where it needs to be placed. Um, and he's he is challenging all fields. You know, he's not living, you know, 10 yards and in, he's able to get to the intermediate spots too. And I think that that's going to be an area that challenges Oklahoma. Cause listen, Oklahoma's linebackers are their strength, right? Well, Tulane runs the ball really, really well. So Oklahoma's linebackers are going to be focusing on slowing down the Tulane rushing attack. Well, that's going to be an opportunity for Tulane to use some play action pass, try to get behind the linebackers and see if they can pick up some chunk gains in that intermediate part of the field. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to what our defense is going to look like in this game. It feels like we may actually see our actual defense this week. Yeah, I went back and looked because someone had asked me the question. He was like, hey, how many players played in the Houston game? So we know like 80-something players played in Temple, which as – blase as that temple game was 80 something players playing is huge that's a lot that's a that's a massive massive number of players getting some sort of experience actually underneath the lights mm -hmm. but it also exposes you to a lot of lot of lack of experience and things that can happen yep. this last one defensively you play 27 players that's too deep minimum almost mm -hmm. three deep there right offense we played 18 so you got out there and that's what 45 players played in this game that's that's two whole you know rosters of players that's pretty darn good to see so it definitely means that we're we were giving everybody the opportunity to get some experience and and, and actually get themselves on tape against a team that doesn't know what they're going to be doing right because you know camp you can only do so much in practices i'm curious to see what the defense implementation is against temple i know that we're going to have to show some things because temple is going to be a challenge but i know that we also want to make sure that when we prepare for tennessee that we're not giving out too much but the under one good thing though john i was thinking about this too is mensa is going to be a great primer in preparation for nico yamale yeah, it's true Right, because because Nico doesn't run a lot, he scrambles, and then he of course he'll run for like touchdowns on short yardage stuff. Mensa is similar, 
you know, they're similar in game. Now, Nico's taller, pretty accurate, got a rocket arm, but statistically, he ain't that far off from what uh, Darian Mintz has put up. So this may be a good way for us to see, all right, this is what we're going to expect against Tennessee on the offensive side. The defense can go out there and really show out. Yeah, we also got Mario Williams coming back to town, who's having a really nice start to his season he with is. the Green Wayne. Ten, 10 catches, 252 yards, looking really, really good. The the promise of the really highly recruited wide receiver is starting to show out on the field, right? Developmental game. He's in what now? Year four of college football. Mm -hmm. And it's now coming together for him. That's what happens with most players. It takes takes that three Two, years three, for them to really show years. out. Yeah. Right. You and then you got that rare breed that shows up, you know, an Adrian Peterson type of Tommy Harris, you know, a player that comes in, Jerome McCoy, that first year and they just all of a sudden destroy people. Dylan Stewart over there at South Carolina, that dude, I swear that doesn't make any sense that he's that good. But <laughs> you you have those situations where a player will come out of nowhere. You're like, dude, where did he come from? Like he's been playing this long. Some players just have that natural instinct. Right now, I mean, Taylor Tatum, when he got his runs, he was getting it in the first game. we probably see some of that more later. Defensively, though, we got to Jaden Jackson, right? He's getting massive push, and he's making it really hard to run. We're one of the better rush defenses in the country right now, and that's something that we should take pride in. I'm hoping that we can keep that going because Tulane's going to try to run the ball, right? I think they're mm -hmm. they're uh, they're running back. Uh, Makai, I can't think of his last name on top of my head now. Makai Hughes. Makai Hughes. Hughes is what it is. I thought I was going to say Henry, but Makai Hughes. He has what, two hundred yards this season, one hundred and fifty. Yeah, he he's up to uh, one hundred eighty seven. So basically, one hundred eighty seven. Right, yeah. he's just under two hundred yards, and he they're going to try to run the ball against Kansas State. Right. See, so if you can slow him down and make Mensa throw more, and like you said, Mensa doesn't throw it deep very often. He spins more in the intermediate, and they take him and break those out into bigger plays because they have guys that if you get the ball in space, what happens, John? They make plays. That's what we need to do this game, too. We need to get the ball to guys in space so they can make plays. Yeah, the two-lane defense actually did a decent job kind of keeping everything in front of them against Kansas State. They didn't allow Avery Johnson to have any big, big plays. Uh, he threw for under 200 yards, but they were able to take care of the football, and that's what made the difference. Uh, Kansas State won the turnover battle two to nothing against the two-lane green wave. So even though they played from behind – for a lot of that game, mm -hmm. uh, their talent level, you know, some of the experience that they have on their team, but also taking care of the football became the difference in the football game. Uh, I, th I think Tulane's defense is going to be pretty good, but they did allow, you know, a lot of rushing yards to the Kansas State offense. So now we're not in the same place as Kansas State right now. They've got things put together a little bit better on the offensive line and in their rushing attack. Yeah. But perhaps, mayhaps, Oklahoma can actually possibly. get some things going, possibly. Hey, what, Angels in the outfield? It could happen. Hey, they're going to shock us. They always do. They they seem to just have this tendency of showing up in games where we're just like, man, we ain't got no chance. Like, Vegas still has us. It's funny. The spread opened at 14 and a half. It's now 13 and a half. It's only moved one point, and literally all the traffic is on Tulane. That tells me everything I need to know. Vegas is like, either Vegas is punning and saying, look, we're just going to lose money. Or they're like, no, 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 please put more on Tulane. We appreciate you putting money on Tulane. The Houston game was one that I thought, because it was funny because in the Houston one, the spread went from 26 to 30 and then it dropped all the way down to 27. I was like, oh, okay. So it balanced out and Vegas is like, eh, we want more people in Oklahoma to jump on this. I think that, in this situation, it's like, why would you only go a point? I figured it'd be like closer to like seven at this point, feel seven points. I'd be concerned because it's so high. I expect us to, to definitely win the game and there should be a chance for us to cover the spread. We'll get more into that on our Friday show here on Locked On Sooners. So make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Shout out again to all the everydayers for tuning in and making Locked On Sooners their first listen every single day. Follow Jay at Unfair Sports, myself, at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners on all the social media platforms. And again, you can, you can subscribe to Locked On Sooners wherever you get your podcasts. For your second listen of the day, go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast from NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College Football in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, 
your team every day. But for Jay Smith, I'm John Williams. We'll talk to you then. Boomer. Sooner.